In this video, we're going to work on riding the sitting trot. So once again, let's start by thinking about the ideal a little bit, and then I'm going to go through some of those common mistakes and give you a few exercises to improve your sitting trot. So when we're sitting the trot, we want to think about supporting our back and once again, staying soft yet tall through our upper body. So we want to maintain that good posture. And one way that I like to kind of picture this is imagine that when you are riding the sitting trot, imagine if you could just watch your helmet and you would see your helmet going up and down by the same amount that the horse's back is going up and down. So you're not really absorbing a lot of movement here in your back, but instead you're more thinking of going with the horse, of kind of bouncing with the horse, and you can think of it as like jumping with the trot. So that the sitting trot is okay to feel bouncy, but when you're moving with the horse and when it's kind of a balanced, controlled bounce, then it can actually be a lot of fun and it can feel really good. Where the sitting trot doesn't feel good is the two mistakes I'm going to talk about, where you either get hard or where you start absorbing too much of it in your body and especially in your back. So let's take a look at what that first sitting trot mistake would look like. So in this one, as she starts to trot, I'm going to brace and I'm going to try to hold on. I'm going to think about holding myself on during the trot and we'll see what it looks like. So if I get tight, I'm going to start bouncing. And you can see the, the air basically between me and the saddle. So I'm going to do that again. Everything's tight. My core is tight. My legs are tight. I'm trying to hold on. And I just bounce up and down. Now I'm going to show you that second mistake. And this one's kind of opposite end of the spectrum. This is where I'm going to get so super soft that I absorb all the movement in my body. So kind of watch my lower back here. So I'm absorbing everything. So it doesn't feel quite as rough. At least I'm not hitting her back. But what happens is riding the trot this way, for one, long term, it can be damaging to you. And two, you there's a limit to how big of a trot you're gonna be comfortable riding this way. So Molly has maybe a, I would say on a scale of one to 10 of lift in her back when she trots, she's got maybe a five. So I'm able to ride her sitting trot that way and it doesn't feel too bad. But if I was able to get, if I was to get on one of my other horses here, say Bandit and try to ride his sitting trot that way, I simply wouldn't be able to do it. His movement is too big. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to imagine a little string pulling up. I'm gonna think about engaging my postural muscles to support my back. I'm gonna find the stretch down with my legs so that I'm thinking about my thighs pointing down, not gripping up. And now when she picks up the trot, I'm gonna think about jumping with her. So now this is the most comfortable trot for both me and Molly. I have the most effectiveness in all of my aids here. And I'd be able to ride this sitting trot in a bigger step or in a smaller step. Now, one of the key things to the sitting trot to understand is that if you have a horse that's moving very hollow and very stiff, it's gonna be difficult to make the sitting trot comfortable at all, no matter how while you're riding it. So the movement of the horse plays a huge role in how easy and how comfortable and enjoyable the sitting trot is. So that's something to be aware of that if your horse is speeding along and is hollow, that's not a good time to even practice the sitting trot. Instead, I would focus on improving the movement of your horse first, working on just a very slow trot sitting until your horse is able to move more comfortably, and just that will make the sitting trot better. Now I have two exercises for you to improve your sitting trot. 
The first one is I find that it is almost always easiest to learn sitting trot without stirrups. With the stirrups, there can be a very natural tendency to brace against them or to grip up with the legs and grip the saddle up here. With the legs long, it gets rid of some of that tendency. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on walk to trot transitions and we're only going to trot as long as we can basically maintain that comfortable feeling, maintain the posture and not start to get stiff and bracing. Usually this is easiest the first few steps into the trot. So in the beginning, we might only get two or three steps and then we're gonna do more as our abilities improve. The other reason I like this exercise is because it kind of saves the horse. I don't find that it's very beneficial to horse or rider to just go around bouncing. It's hard for the rider to find that softness already in the movement and it's not very comfortable for the horse. The horse will start to go hollow. That makes it even harder for the rider. So instead we're gonna do these transitions. So I'm gonna ask Molly into the trot. I'm just gonna do a few strides. Then if you're just learning this, wherever you lose your balance, come back to a walk. Think about softening everything again. Find your neutral, kind of do a quick scan of your body. And then back into the trot again. Now anywhere that you find your leg starting to grip or any time you start to feel grip, point your toes down. So in fact, if I trotter here with my toes pointed down, that's gonna help prevent me from gripping. It's also gonna change where I'm feeling, where I'm feeling it on my leg versus if I tried to bring my legs and hold them up here. So saying pointed toes, good girl. And that's also gonna help. So your two exercises, two main ones for the sitting trot are first to ride without stirrups, do these transitions. And then the second one is to, when you feel any brace, point down with the toes. So in uh, Stay in the Saddle, in this book, there are um, 67 exercises, but there's hundreds of combinations to create uh, different training programs to plan your ride. And this is so much more than a book because in here there's a, a link to a video and a full video program that comes with this so that you can see, just like we did here, a little demonstration and some troubleshooting for each one of the exercises. There is a link down below where you can learn more about the book, get the details and get a copy of the book and everything that comes with it for yourself. So thank you so much for watching and as always, enjoy the ride. We'll see you next time.